Uh, this is kind of an update on the model train project, which is now my around the wall layout. Um, with running the trains on the, you know, now the much larger layout, a few things have occurred that I had to adjust in the programming. Um, the one thing is, <laughs> I've had a couple cases where the locomotives, the cars would decouple and break apart from the uh, train, the running train, and then the train would, you know, the locomotive would come around and smack into it. So, um, can't really show because it's internal to the code, uh, but a decoupling routine was installed that monitors the uh, layout that if it senses that the train breaks apart it'll just stop everything and throw in hard alarm now another thing is all the locomotives on this layout are purely conventional the PLC has 100 percent control of the direction control speed and so forth but the one thing I had found is being that I have a larger collection of locomotives, well, not by some people's measures, but I have a, a decent amount. Some of them are single motor, some of them are dual motor, and it come to find out when I try to run a mixed on the layout, some the single motor locomotives require a lot more throttle. So what I did was add in now a locomotive throttle offset. So like say for example, up there, on the team track is a Pennsylvania Railroad uh, locomotive, steam locomotive. This is like one of Lionel's lower end steam engines, single motor. Um, this does tend to require a bit more throttle in order for it to run right. I mean, it does run right, uh, just compare it to the dual motor, like my DNH RS3 and the Alaska GP9, uh, they require a lot less throttle to run so to try to have them relatively run its uh consistent speed with each other i've added in this locomotive offset which i could you know based on what where the train is located whether it be main line the side track or the team track well the alaska gp9 which is the train designated on the main line is started up and is running around the layout. Another change that I made was when a train is going to be parked into a block, it rings its bell to indicate that the train is moving into a park position. As you hear. So the train's brought into the throughway and stopped. This is one of my alternating programs. So now the train on the side track, which happens to be my DNH unit, is started up. Neutral. Power cycle to move the locomotive forward. If you remember from my earlier videos, this was always designated as the goofy guy because this locomotive has a lot of problems with its forward and reverse. Zip. Since then, the uh, electronic E unit has been replaced because it finally just outright failed. <laughs> and its rear traction motor was replaced just because this locomotive, during the development of my PLC projects, was uh, heavily used. Because of its uh, unexpected behavior, it was a, a good way of uh, bug testing these programs because you can't always guarantee how loco locomotives and conventional motor are going to act. So with this running, it does a run around using the sidetrack. The train operation that's running now is the main side team alternating run, which basically lets each locomotive run around the layout X number of times, which currently I have it set to three, and then the next locomotive will run its laps, and this will continue on endlessly until I select another train operation or something occurs and it shuts down. Uh, this should be the last lap for the sidetrack train as it's passing the main line north blowing its horn for 
grade crossing. Now, before the team train can run, the train that's on the main line is started back up. And this is going to get moved to the east side. So the team, the train that's on the team track right now can do a run around it using the other track that it's currently sitting on. So it's signaling that it's going to be parked. Now switches three and four are thrown to the turnout. And now the train on the team track will start up. This is an older locomotive. A single motor steam. Which uh, has an earlier version of sounds called train sounds. Not rail sounds. And in order for this locomotive to run about the same speed as the other ones, you'll notice I have the throttle increased by 15% over the standard throttle. Which the base throttle, 65%. This shows what the throttle is actually being outputted. And also, again, because my house isn't level... I have offsets to where I can increase or decrease the throttle as the train moves along the layout because parts of the layout are actually a slight downgrade and other parts are an uphill grade. So like I said, this train does a runaround using its team track while the uh, mainline train is parked on the east side. Unlike rail sounds, the train sounds can only have one sound active at a time. So you hear the chuff, 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 but then when the whistle blows, you don't hear the chuff, chuff anymore. Uh, this might be its, yep, this is its last lap. Bell's ringing. It's going to be pulled into the team track and parked. And it stopped. Switches three and four are thrown back to the throughway, the main line. And now the main line train will start up. Now this train always starts up and forward, so. Now this train here, the, my DNHR is three unit. Even with the power off, it's going to remember its forward and reverse sequence. The PLC does uh, compensate for that, which I'll show when its next round is up. Uh, this should be its last lap. Uh, no, guess not. The bell didn't ring. Okay, we'll go around another time. What you see here, these red lights are actually photo eye sensors that are on both sides of the switches. Their main purpose is designed is that uh, if a train is in the area of the switch, it won't allow a switch to be thrown, which could jam it. But it also will serve a purpose of detecting the train movement. Okay, this should be its last lap. There we go. So hopefully you'll be able to see the DNH as it starts up. Okay, so now the switches are thrown to the side track. The DNH goofy guy is powered up. Neutral. Doesn't detect any motion. Cycle power. Wrong direction. What happened was the train hit that photo eye, so it says, oh, 
wrong direction. So the power is cycled so the train is moved in the correct direction. That's how the PLC handles the forward and reverse of conventional trains. I never programmed it to memorize where the train's forward reverse is at because some of them change. Like I said, a lot of locomotives nowadays, after 10 seconds of no track power, will revert to forward. I also have, in addition, this MTH Rail King in O&W. This locomotive will always start up in neutral and then forward. So that's why I use a combination of the photo eyes and the block detection to sense the train's motion. So this is just like an update on the PLC project, which is now my around the wall layout. And soon my Christmas themed trains will be placed on the layout. And I'll have three of them to run on the layout, all with lighted up box cars. This is a new one that I just uh, built, so it'll be cool to see that run. And this guy here is actually an RS3 that's been modified, that it could run on either track power or battery power. And when the track gets really dirty, that's when I'll use this one to clean the track. I made my own custom track cleaning car, which right now is stacked on top because uh, I'm out of room. So this is like an update. Until next time, take care.